Experiment. To use the standard solution of sodium carbonate solution prepared in the previous experiment to standardize a given hydrochloric acid solution. Sodium carbonate is a base that reacts with hydrochloric acid according to the equation shown on the screen. Essentially, what is happening is that the carbonate ion is accepting two protons from the hydrochloric acid to form carbon dioxide and water. By titrating the given hydrochloric acid solution against a known volume of sodium carbonate solution, whose concentration is accurately known, we can determine the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution. Wash out the pipette, burette and conical flask with deionized water. This removes any impurities present. In acid-based titrations, the acid is usually placed in the burette and the base in the conical flask. One of the main reasons for this is because some common bases, example sodium hydroxide, if placed in a burette would cause the tap to stick. Sodium hydroxide solution attacks glass especially the ground surfaces in some burette taps. Also, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air and forms a crust of sodium carbonate around the tap. This happens even with the modern plastic taps. Both of these actions cause burette taps to become seized up. Since this is the first titration that we are doing, we will go through the procedure in detail. You will be doing lots of other titrations and it is recommended that you always follow this procedure. For this titration, we use the indicator methyl orange to determine the end point of the titration. Pour about 100 centimeters cubed of the sodium carbonate solution from the volumetric flask into a clean, dry beaker. Also, pour about 100 centimeters cubed of the hydrochloric acid solution into another beaker. Label both beakers. We have now finished the first part of the procedure. The pipette, burette and conical flask have been rinsed out with deionized water. We now begin part two in which the pipette and burette will be rinsed out with the solutions that they will contain. Rinse out the pipette with some of the sodium carbonate solution. Rinse out the burette with some of the hydrochloric acid solution.
Rinsing the glassware with the liquid that is to be used in them is necessary in order to remove any drops of water. This water would dilute the solution placed in the glassware. We have now finished rinsing out the burette and the pipette with the solutions that they will contain. In the third part of the experiment, pipette 25 centimeters cubed of the sodium carbonate solution into a conical flask. A pipette is filled by drawing the solution into it by suction. The liquid is drawn into the pipette above the graduation mark etched on its surface. This is done using a pipette filler. It will be bad practice to pipette directly from the volumetric flask as any impurities on the outside of the pipette could contaminate the entire solution of sodium carbonate. Hence, this is the reason why you first pour the sodium carbonate into a beaker. When the bottom of the meniscus is level with the graduation mark, the tip of the pipette is touched against the side of a glass beaker to remove any drops adhering to the tip. The pipette is then allowed to discharge slowly into a conical flask keeping the tip of the pipette in contact with the side of the flask. This avoids splashing of the liquid. When the discharge is complete, touch the tip of the pipette against the side of the flask and wait a few seconds before removing the pipette from the flask. This is called draining time. Having removed the pipette from the flask, it will be observed that a small amount of liquid remains in the tip. Do not blow out this liquid into the conical flask. It has been taken into account when the pipette was calibrated at the manufacturing stage. In the fourth part of the experiment, add about three drops of methyl orange indicator to the sodium carbonate in this conical flask. Note the yellow colour. Methyl orange is yellow in neutral or basic solution and red in acidic solution. Do not use too much indicator as an intense colour may make it difficult to see the colour change at the end point. In addition, as we will see later, indicators themselves are either weak acids or weak bases. Adding too much indicator could affect the result. In the fifth part of the experiment, clamp the burette vertically using the retort stand. Using a small funnel, fill the burette almost completely with the dilute hydrochloric acid solution. Open the tap briefly and allow some of the liquid to run into a beaker marked waste. This is done in order to fill the tap and the space below the tap. Remove the funnel from the burette. If you forget to do this, you may introduce an error into your readings as drops of liquid may fall from the funnel in the course of the titration. Using the thumb and first two fingers of the left hand, open the top of the burette. Allow the solution to run slowly into the beaker marked waste until the bottom of the meniscus is opposite the zero graduation mark. Check that there are no air bubbles in the nozzle. For the sixth part of the experiment, place a white tile on the base of the retort stand and put the conical flask on the white tile. The purpose of the white tile is to enable us to detect colour changes more easily. Using the thumb and first two fingers of the left hand, open the top of the burette. Allow the acid to run fairly quickly into the conical flask. 
The conical flask should be continuously swirled with the right hand. Stop the titration from time to time and, using the wash bottle, wash down the sides of the conical flask. The reason for doing this is to ensure that no drops of acid are stuck to the side of the flask. It is important that all of the acid added from the burette reacts with the sodium carbonate. Note that deionized water may be added to the conical flask at any stage of the titration. It does not affect the amount of sodium carbonate in the conical flask. We have pipetted 25 centimetres cubed of the sodium carbonate solution into the conical flask. This volume of sodium carbonate contains a certain number of moles of sodium carbonate. Whether we now add 10 centimetres cubed or 100 centimetres cubed of deionized water to the conical flask, this will not affect the number of moles of sodium carbonate present in the conical flask. When the colour of the indicator has turned pink, stop the titration and note the volume of acid added. A piece of white paper behind the burette will help you to take the reading more accurately. This rough titration tells you approximately where the end point is. In the final part of the experiment, you must now perform two further accurate titrations, adding the acid drop by drop as you come near the end point. First, Bring the level of the hydrochloric acid back up to the zero mark in the burette. Although it is not essential to have the burette reading at the zero mark for each titration, it is less likely to cause errors for the student if the meniscus is brought back to the zero mark. This means that the volume may be read directly and that there is less likelihood of an error when subtracting the initial reading from the final reading. The conical flask should be emptied and rinsed out well with deionized water before each titration is carried out also. Now we are ready to carry out the first accurate titration. We know from the rough titration that the end point is 24.1 cm cubed. As we near this end point, we will add the hydrochloric acid drop by drop.
When performing each accurate titration, one drop of acid should turn the solution in the conical flask a faint pink colour. Turning the tap through a revolution of 180 degrees allows one drop into the conical flask. The results of these two accurate titrations should agree to within 0.1 cm cubed. If they do not agree, a further titration should be carried out until agreement to within 0.1 cm cubed is obtained. The titration result, also called the titer for this experiment, is taken as the average of the two readings which agree to within 0.1 cm cubed. The rough titration performed to give you an approximate idea where the end point is should be neglected. For example, if the three titration readings are 22.9 cm cubed, 22.4 cm cubed and 22.5 cm cubed, the titration figure to be used in the calculations is the average of 22.4 cm cubed and 22.5 cm cubed, that is 22.45 cm cubed. The method of calculating the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution is shown in your textbook. This concludes the experiment. <laughs>